Good evening and welcome to the News Roundup for Friday, March 10. I am Abigail Smythe. Now, before we get into the news, please like this video, share your views in the comments, and share the video with your family and friends. Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! Now, for the news in detail. Over 30 people, including children, are now homeless after a large fire gutted several houses on West Street in downtown Kingston Friday morning. Reports are that the fire started sometime after 8 o'clock. The blaze reportedly spread from West Street onto Matthews Lane, destroying a total of nine dwellings. District Officer Bailey Hall of the York Park Fire Station gave a report. Upon arrival at this location, several dwelling rooms were on fire. Two medium jets was put into operation to combat the blaze. We got it under control shortly after. Several residents are affected, some completely destroyed, some partially destroyed. No injury, nothing else. The police high command says it has taken note of information being circulated that criminals in the Kingston Western Police Division are organizing a series of attacks against members of the security forces. This follows the fatal shooting of one of the division's most wanted men, Karen Angus, otherwise called Kadula. He was fatally shot during a confrontation with members of the force on Studley Park Road in Kingston West about 2.40 Thursday afternoon. One TP9SA Canic 9mm pistol fitted with a magazine containing one 9mm round of ammunition was seized subsequent to the incident. The police are advising anyone with the intention to attack members of the security forces to refrain from doing so as the security forces will take the necessary action and apply the necessary training to defend themselves and all law-abiding citizens. Dance hall artiste Unknown Gringo was shot and killed in Rock District, Trelawney, Friday morning. Reports are that around 12.30, the artist, whose given name is Franz Morris, was sitting in his Toyota Crown motor car when he was pounced upon by two armed men who opened fire, hitting him. The police were summoned and upon their arrival, Morris was discovered in the driver's seat of the vehicle with gunshot wounds to his upper body. The 39-year-old is known for the songs at Tank Up, Brawling Death, Money Factory and Shy featuring Jada Kingdom. A Rastafarian man was shot and killed by unknown assailants in Baker's Death Square, St. James, Friday morning. He has been identified as Ezekiel Barrett, otherwise called Barker, of Blue Hole and Richmond Hill addresses in St. James. Reports from the police are that around 7.20, Barrett was standing in the square when he was ambushed by armed men who shot him multiple times. He died on the scene. The Cambridge police were summoned and upon their arrival, the scene was processed and Barrett's body removed to the morgue for post-mortem. No motive has been established for the killing. The police have charged the suspect held in connection with last month's rape and murder of a nine-year-old girl in Hanover. 42-year-old Omar Green, the intimate partner of the child's mother and a resident of Barbary Hill in the parish, was charged Thursday afternoon with the murder and rape of Nikita Noel. Head of the Hanover Police Superintendent Sharon Beeput says Green was charged based on forensic evidence collected by investigators. He is booked to appear in court next week. Green was taken into custody hours after the nine-year-old girl was found dead in bushes near her, near her home in Kew District on February 1. Investigators reported that Nikita, a student of Escher Primary, was returning home from school when she was attacked and killed. An autopsy report revealed that she was raped and strangled. While hailing the conviction of 15 members of the Klansman Wandan gang as a win for Jamaica, 
Director of Public Prosecutions, DPP, Paula Llewellyn, lauded the two ex-gangsters for putting Jamaica first by helping the state to put the hoodlums behind bars. The two self-confessed ex-gang members and drivers who doubled in their gang roles as banker and community don gave key evidence about its operations and criminal activities, which were instrumental in securing the convictions against leader Andre Blackman Bryan and his cronies. One of the ex-gangsters provided secretly recorded conversations between himself and other members, which the judge used to rule that some of the defendants were gang members. The DPP says the administration of justice and Jamaica succeeded. And she notes that the victory would not have been secured without the help of the two main witnesses. In the meantime, a deputy commissioner of police, Fitz Bailey, who is in charge of crime and security, was equally pleased with the conviction. Bran was found guilty of being the leader and facilitating seven murders by the notorious St. Catherine-based gang, including a double murder and arson, while 14 of his henchmen were convicted of being members. Like Brian, some were also convicted for facilitating the gang's murder and murder conspiracy, and one was found guilty of gun charges. The majority of the convictions were handed down in the Home Circuit Court on Wednesday by Chief Justice Brian Sykes, wrapping up the trial which commenced in September 2021. Of the 33 defendants initially hauled before the court, 17 were freed and one was killed. Among those convicted are ex-soldier Jermaine Robinson and so-called St. Thomas pastor Stephanie Cole Christie, the lone female member. The DPP, while congratulating the police, highlighted that the case was well investigated and that the police amassed a lot of useful and crucial evidence. Similarly, she also hailed the four prosecutors for the high-class professional job in bringing the matter before the court despite many challenges. And National Security Minister Dr. Harris Chang says he supports judge-only trials, especially in major gang cases like the Wandon Klansman gang trial. He is hailing the convictions in the trial where 15 people were found guilty of being part of the criminal organization. They are now facing sentencing. Dr. Chang says it would be difficult to find jurors to participate in such a trial and adds that it would be impossible to protect the jurors in such a trial. Meanwhile, the National Security Minister says the murder rate could be 35% higher if the police were not monitoring communication from behind bars and averting ordered hits. Dr. Chang admits that some officers who work inside the prisons get involved in smuggling contraband such as phones into the cells. He says some of these officers do so out of fear. Two motor vehicles were stolen and at least two others vandalized in the Cricklewood housing scheme in Shor on Shortwood Road, St. Andrew, Thursday morning. Several men broke onto the property. The watchman was also robbed by the men. Head of the St. Andrew North Police Division, Superintendent Sharika Service, says around 4 a.m., six men, one armed with a firearm, entered the premises. She says the men robbed the watchman of personal belongings before finding a way to open the gate to the housing scheme and driving away with a white 2017 Toyota Probox and a brown 2015 Suzuki Vitara. She states that to ensure the safety of the residents, the police have increased their patrols in the area. Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says the government will consider leasing major medical equipment to reduce downtime and unavailability. Dr. Tufton says to address the recurring issue of equipment at hospitals being unusable or malfunctioning due to lack of maintenance or depreciation, the government is looking at leasing instead of purchasing. He says during a lease, there is an agreed maintenance schedule arranged by the supplier. Dr. Tufton adds that some of the existing equipment at public hospitals require the sourcing of maintenance people from overseas. He says there are cases where people have to fly from as far as Germany to service machines and this adds to the downtime. In addition to leasing new equipment, Dr. Tufton says training for local personnel is being considered to reduce the cost and need for maintenance experts from abroad. In business news, the 
government will be moving to create a structured market for the second sale of motor vehicles. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark says under the plan, those selling a motor vehicle in this new second sale market will only pay GCT on the difference between the price at which they originally bought the vehicle and the price at which they are selling the vehicle. Minister Clark says this move will boost economic activity. In the region, the Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO, in collaboration with a number of other United Nations agencies and partners, have launched a campaign to encourage countries in Latin America and the Caribbean to reduce maternal mortality, which increased by 15% between 2016 and 2020. PAHO says an estimated 8,400 women die each year in the region from complications in pregnancy, childbirth, and postpartum. Of that number, 1,300 were in the Caribbean. PAHO says high blood pressure, severe bleeding, and complications from unsafe abortions are the most common causes. And on the international scene, a first-of-its-kind World Health Organization, WHO, global report on sodium intake reduction shows that the world is likely to miss the global target of reducing sodium intake by 30% by 2025. Sodium, an essential nutrient, increases the risk of heart disease, stroke, and premature death when consumed in excess. The main source of sodium is table salt. The report shows that only 5% of WHO member states are protected by mandatory and comprehensive sodium reduction policies, and 73% of WHO member states lack full range of implementation of such policies. Implementing highly cost-effective sodium reduction policies could save an estimated 7 million lives globally by 2030. WHO says this is an important component of action to achieve the sustainable development goal of reducing deaths from non-communicable diseases. The WHO says unhealthy diets are a leading cause of death and disease globally, and excessive sodium intake is one of the main culprits. And in sports, the South African captain's 171 not out put his team in a strong position on the third day of the second test against the West Indies at the Wanderers Stadium in Johannesburg on Friday. A second innings total of 287 for 7 gave them an overall lead of 356. West Indian captain Craig Brathwaite said he still had hopes of a West Indian win. And rookie West Indies left-arm spinner Gudakesh Motti is one of three players nominated for the ICC Men's Player of the Month of February. The 27-year-old was named alongside England batsman Harry Brook and veteran Indian all-rounder Ravindra Jadeha in the nominations announced on Tuesday by Cricket's World Governing Body. In only his third test last month, Motti snatched a record match haul of 13 for 99 to spin West Indies to innings and four-run victory over Zimbabwe in the second and final test in Bulawayo. Marty's performance earned the visitors a 1-0 series win following a draw in the opening test. His figures were the best by a West Indies spinner in tests, surpassing the likes of legendary players Sonny Ramadin, Alf Valentine and Lance Gibbs. Marty finished the two-test series with 19 wickets to earn the Player of the Series award and his first-ever ICC Player of the Month nomination. Motti, who made his test debut last June against Bangladesh, has picked up 19 wickets at an outstanding average of 15.89. And that's it for your news roundup for today. Please remember to like this video, leave a comment, and share the video with your family and friends. I am Abigail Smythe. Have a good evening and see you next time. Teach them! Hey, yo, hello! Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here. Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Like the video before you go. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. And remember to share the video with your friends and family. And browse the channel for more quality content. Until next time, walk good, my friends. Teach them!